want to hear one more person. And then we're going to do why we're, what we're here for. Y'all look good! Hey, I want to start off, hey, we got to remember why we're here. Let's go back to that. Say his name! George Floyd! Say his name! George Floyd! Say his name! George Floyd! George Floyd. Oh, shit! Okay, y'all, so... There's so many things to talk about. Liberation, there is no liberation. Without black liberation, there is no 
take a knee of Seth's security. Everybody take a knee in honor of George Floyd of Seth's security. Everybody take a knee of Seth's security.
Repeat after me. Fist up, fist up. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must all be support one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Now I'm gonna need y'all to say this with y'all fucking chest. Like yes, y'all fucking give a chance. I'm not slacking off. Yes. It is our duty to fight for freedom. It is our duty to fight for freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must all be support one another. We must love and protect one another. Testing, testing, one, two, three, fans, tell me if you hear me, please. Tell me if you hear me. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Let me know in the YouTube chat, if because that's the only chat I can see right now, if you can hear me. But everyone go to Rockfin, if you're a real one. <laughs> check, check, check. Check, one, two. Sam, can you try opening the stream, see if you can hear me? Okay, great, you can hear me. All right, thank you, Kim Harden. Thank you, Malik Clary. Soap Constructs, you are the champion of the people. And we are here on the streets with the people. It is one year since George Floyd's murder. We are currently on Vine Street and they're marching northward. And you can see, this is a pretty uh, busy street. This is Hollywood. You know, so you got the stars here on the ground, right? For people who aren't aware, you know, this is Hollywood and we're about to get to Selma Avenue. We just left Ho uh, Sunset Boulevard. You've heard of Sunset Boulevard before. Uh, I think earlier you all might have seen that some people were reluctant to talk to the media. I'm gonna try and interview a couple people on why they didn't want to talk to the media. Can you hold this? What did you say? They're talking to the media. They were reluctant to talk to the media. Hey, you need to ask them why the hell they're covering this. Because sometimes they cover this in a exactly. biased way. Exactly. Or a way where they're like showing you only like certain aspects that will get ratings instead of the whole thing. One of the things I would like to see that I didn't see now is um, to talk about, you know, Palestine. The uh, American police 
get trained by Israeli soldiers. And they do that to people in Palestine, and the police here do that to people here. The same tactics that were used on George Floyd are used on Palestinians. Movements would be stronger if you were able to understand that those two issues are not separate. They're the same. What we do abroad is what we do here. The violence that the United States pushes all over the world is the same violence that police push here. More people need to understand that. More people need to understand that. So they're marching down Vine Street here. We were out here, uh, man, it was like over a month ago now. I forgot. No, it was like over a month ago for an, another uh, Black Lives Matter protest. I can't even remember who was for this the last time. It's just, just there's so many names. There's so many people. So, um, it was the, the little boy, I believe, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, so. And there's a Medicare for All march coming up too in July. So, and it's going to have a very similar route as this because this is like, you know, the area they want to go through. This is Hollywood. There's a lot of people who ignore everything, right? They ignore homelessness, they ignore police brutality, they ignore foreign policy, they ignore anything that's going on. But in the eight years that I've lived in LA, I have never seen it this bad. I have never seen that many people not have a home. I've never seen that many people in the streets. I've never seen that much poverty. And it's not getting better, it's getting worse. It is getting worse, it's getting worse every day. Uh, they're continuing to march. Now we're going down Hollywood Boulevard. This is Hollywood and Vine, usually a super busy street. Uh, you can see here, it says- Vine, the, and we're going now on Hollywood. Now going on Hollywood, it says defund police, refund community. That is a fantastic idea. But in order to defund the police, you need to understand that you need to tackle the military industrial here, complex. Back, please, come on up, come on up. You need to defund the Pentagon. You need to abolish the CIA because they're not gonna do this. They're not gonna defund the police. None of these politicians are gonna do that, guys. They're just not. And a lot of people miss that point. They think that, you know, just because a politician talks nice to them, promises them the world, you know, it's like a, a person that, you know, promises that you everything, but they have zero intention of following through. We've seen that. We've seen that time and time again. People need to learn that there's, there's no route to police abolition without understanding that we live in an empire and the military industrial complex runs the police and the police get trained in a military way. They're equipped with military grade riot gear and military grade weapons. If you're not talking about imperialism, and if you're not talking about foreign policy, you're not understanding the depth of this. It surface level. The abolition of police will only come when people get out on the streets and understand that their government isn't run by them. It's not even run by presidents or Congress. It's run by state agencies. Have, who have zero intention of doing anything good for you. They're just going to pretend and give you crumbs and symbolic gestures. The squad literally just gave $2 billion to the Capitol Police it's for them to reinforce and protect themselves against this. It's only for the Capitol Police. That's not even our defense budget, by the way. The DOJ got money, the FBI got money. And, you know, we gotta shift the conversation to 
How do you plan on ending violence here and ignoring the violence that we perpetuate on other people abroad? It's not going to happen. Oh shit, so something just happened. I don't know what happened, but they're chasing somebody down. What the fuck just happened? Hold on. So somebody just did something. And, uh, oh. I just saw some people tackling somebody. I don't know what happened. Agitator, some agitator. So there's a blonde dude with a leather jacket on. They're pushing him away. They're pushing the they're pushing the pushing this guy away with a leather jacket. He's got a leather jacket. You got the whole group of people pushing away. You got so the leader of the organizers are pushing people back away from the guy. The guy's backing up. He's in a leather jacket. He's got blonde hair. But he disrupted the fucking protest. So that's what happens there. And uh there's a lot of anger. Uh, yeah, like this is a part where I'm like, this just destroys everything because you can't react like that, dude. You just can't. Like it just looked like now everything's like about that interaction. Exactly. That's why these people do it. Do you not realize by now this is why these people do it? And unfortunately, too many people on the left get super emotional and they have to immediately like attack. By the way, like, nobody, like, and this is a part that what's going to happen is somebody on the right is going to get that part and said, look how violent exactly. Antifa is and look how violent BLM, even though the vast majority of this has been normal, peaceful, and very quiet. But the moment you give them impetus, the moment you fucking react the way they want you to, you fucking lost it, man. It's the culture war. This doesn't help anybody. Let the guy say whatever the hell he wants to say. He's a dumbass. He's a stupid I don't know if he, like, did dumbass. Something. I don't know if he did something. But then you have people who handled it. You don't have the whole mob of people get distracted. And now it looks like a giant shit show. Learn to walk away from these instances. No matter how vile these people may be, what they want is to get a rise out of you. Every single fucking time. When last time we were here, I think it was that time with Glory, right? It, the same thing happened, dude. They live off this. They they make a money up. They make a living off this. And when you play into that, even if you're in the right, if you play into that, it doesn't help anybody. It really doesn't because now see you see you fractured the whole thing. Now it's all fucking. It's just it loses its value. Yeah, Sophie's pretty right on that. So this is why I don't know. You saw like Malcolm X had his uh, his group very like militant, like very like controlled, very like. But that's the thing. Half these people like, are afraid that's the of power. guns. That's the power he showed, Malcolm X. You know, he'd be yeah. like, "Everybody stay back, don't do anything." Yeah. You know? And then same thing with Fred Hampton. I'm sure that you know they were pretty calm. Yeah, but that's but that's the that's the but that's the whole point is that then it becomes a joke. It becomes a shit show. The part, the, a lot of these people, by the way, are, um, you know, I don't like to generalize, but a lot of people on the left, right? And I consider myself on the left, right? But a lot of people on the left are also very much afraid of guns, afraid of militant type of organizing. You know, we've heard when militant types like the Black Panthers show up at a protest or when, you know, the Boogaloo Boys show up and they say, hey, I'm going to help you. They reject them. They reject them and say, oh, we don't want... You know, we don't want those guns here. We don't want that type of organizing. We don't want violence, which is ironic because then this shit happens, right? And then you're like, okay, well then what happened? Like, which is it, right? Like, be, be consistent. There's a lack of consistency. And you're not gonna change people's minds by yelling angry at them and calling them like a Nazi every five seconds. You're just not gonna do it. It's just not gonna happen, right? And that, that part of that that happens here it's like yeah you may be in the right he may be an idiot he may be awful he may be a piece of shit he may even be a white supremacist but that's what they want you're giving them exactly what they want i just i you know my opinion is it's a giant waste of time and it's absolutely hurtful 
to everything you're doing. Here. All right, so now they're uh, continuing to march on there. There's still some stragglers. Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? Everybody Good shout out always. to Austin here. Bo yes, sir. What's up? What's up? Shout out to the Convo Couch. Thank you, brother. Always Thank you. Ground. Yes. Did you see what happened? No, I didn't see. What happened? Can you so explain? Earlier, Did you, were you like right there? Well, I know that's the same guy from earlier. He drove by in a car and yelled out Heil Hitler and then said fuck and then a racial slur with the N-word. He came back and then ran through the crowd and was messing with people. And then they realized that was him and they chased him through. And then uh, he got dealt with by security uh, and then he got ran out of the area but he was the same dude who was screaming racial slurs and yelling out Heil Hitler earlier you think like you, so like uh, almost like every single protest you know we've gone to we see this ha we see provocateurs agents of people who like you know yeah. come in to intentionally fuck with the group right I feel like uh, you know giving attention to it kind of takes away from the rest of the protest what do you think I think it does uh, I'm not sure what his motives were but I know that like in this heightened emotional space, especially on the anniversary, everyone's like running on high emotions and like there's always going to be people like that and like it's it's hard to see, it's sad to see it, but you know, just because there's good, I mean there's hate too and everyone's going to be out here like, you know, so anyway, I guess that's all I got to say about it. But Thank you, brother. Yeah, Thank you for letting us know. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So they're continuing to march on Hollywood Boulevard. You know, it's a busy street. He's right, I don't know how far, how far they, they're going. I don't know. But he's right, by the way. I mean, everybody's emotions are heightened, you know, and, <laughs> and he's in the right. I mean, you know, people here are in the right. I mean, right. If somebody shouts that, you know, it's kind of like that one time Johnny and I were walking by and somebody said, go home or go back to Mexico or something. Or, or when that lady came out of her apartment and told him, some Rachel slur. I mean, uh, like, it, you know, when you experience that, it gets to people, right? It's like, oh, shit, like, people like that exist. Like, they're still there. Like, and, you know, when you don't experience it for a while, you're like, oh, it's whatever. But once people say something like that, you know, people get emotional. And it's totally understandable. At the same time, it's kind of like, that's what they want, though. <laughs> you know? All right, so, okay. Everybody, I'm here with uh, a, a person of the rally, a protester from the rally. What's your name? My name is Camille Lewis. Camilla. Can you hold the camera? Thank you. Camille Lewis. Camille Lewis. And uh, so it's been a year since we've seen George Floyd, uh, you know, the, the murder of George Floyd. You know, it was very graphic. You know, we've been out on the streets since a year ago, since when this all began. And uh, we've, seen, uh, we've seen some changes around the nation. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on the changes you've seen so far? And... Uh, you know, how you feel about the whole situation right now, the police in the United States right now? Well, I took to the streets one year ago for the empowerment and liberation of black people. I'm really offended that the Asian anti-hate crime bill passed, but the George Floyd Police Act didn't pass, and that's frustrating. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's interesting. Of course, there is, uh, we recognize that, that, that hate is there, but it's like, what have we been fighting in the year, a, a whole year for? And uh, yeah, I, I totally, I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah. And uh, do you, I, I just haven't really seen so many changes. I've seen some changes on a, a, a very local, you know, like pinpoints on the map, right? It needs to be like a broad paintbrush of change, right. but, which we haven't been seeing, which a lot of people thought we'd be seeing with uh, President Biden, but we haven't really been seeing. Not at all. We expect our sets of demands are clear, you know, we want like qualified immunity to be gone. Yes. And I think another set of demands is to defund the police. We are sick and tired of the police budget being billions of dollars and housing and homeless being just a few hundred million. If that, if that, that is frustrating. And we want the Los Angeles Police Association to not be considered a union anymore. Yeah, 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 because they're, uh can you tell us why, you know, why, what, what they've done so far to, to, to make you say that? Um, Black Lives Matter LA holds a rally every week at 3 p.m. at 1313 West 8th Street. Um, they got rid of Jackie Lacey and their new... Um, Garcon, yeah, district attorney. Yes, and got Gasson in office. And now what Black Lives Matter LA wants to do is get the Los Angeles Police Association kicked out of the, the union 
what the Los Angeles Police Association forgets is that a lot of people who were murdered by the police are black and brown and their family members are in the union and they want that union, Los Angeles Police Association, to be kicked out of the unions. They're not a union, they're an association. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you for that. Um, you know, uh, are you a local in, in, in LA? Like how yes, long? How long? I've lived in Los Angeles my whole life for 42 years. Okay, so in your opinion, you know, what, what do you think about the governor right now? You know, like uh, how he's handled COVID, you know, how he's handled the police, the police brutality situation, how he's handled the lockdown, and as well as uh, as Mayor Garcetti. I'm sure you've been outside of his house. Yeah, <laughs> we've been, we've, we've uh, covered those protests many times. I'm pretty neutral on the governor. Garcetti needs to be recalled. I'm horrified that he's gonna be ambassador to India. My God, four unhoused people a day die under Garcetti's watch. I hate Garcetti. He's a horrible mayor. Okay, great. Well, we appreciate your uh, your voice. You know, we like to give people on the ground uh, uh, a voice. You know, we like to interview people. So uh, uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank and uh, it was Camille, correct? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Congo, Congo couch. Sorry. All right, so you heard it. Guys. Guys, 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 we got to pay attention to, you know, how people are feeling, too, here locally. There's so many things going on in L.A. tomorrow. They're reopening the Echo Park Lake Park. Um, you know, and the Mitchell Farrell, city councilman extraordinaire, decided that he was going to make it an invite-only event. Yeah, that's right. He's gatekeeper of the park. We're going to be covering that as well, because how the hell do you make a park invite only? First of all, after kicking out all the homeless people, right? All right, it looks like they're stopping here, fam. Great. I'm a little tired. <laughs> so we're starting at Cherokee and Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, Hollywood actually looks a little dead right now. It is uh, a Tuesday, so there's not many people looking at the stars. Not a very touristy day, but uh, give me a second here. All right, so here we are, and I'd like to talk to more organizers of the events. And I want to see here. There's somebody here who is directly. Okay, so the gentleman speaking is the one who the media tried talking to. Let's listen into the to the speech. Remember that. I am you, you are me, and God is we. But they, they dropped it on two other charges. This one we don't know what's going to happen. 
check, check, check. All right, so I had to put the mic on because we're playing music. Don't want to get copyrighted here. I'll leave my shutters down. So they're playing Kendrick Lamar. We're going to be all right. We going to be all right. They're putting a fist up. This song has been played a lot throughout the summer. And uh, a lot of people like this song. It's a great song. And uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, Kendrick's a champion. <laughs> uh, great song. So you got uh, most of the people raising their fists up on Hollywood and Highland. Highland Avenue, Hollywood Boulevard. Pretty busy street usually, pretty busy street, especially on the weekend. Don't even try to come here on the weekend. It's busy, dude. There's so many people. So I think they're gonna continue going straight after this stop. I think they're gonna stop here for eight minutes. You see all these people turning around. It's starting to get all traffic and shit. People going crazy. I've been seeing this blue Mustang kind of keep, uh, keep coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, the, uh, you know, people are turning around, trying to make a left, trying to go straight. It's kind of a tricky road, this one, on Highland, but uh, the group the group has decided to start, stop here. People are dancing on the streets. And they're going to say, what's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> okay, so they're marching downwards, not marching ahead towards Hollywood Boulevard. So they're marching down Highland now. So that's interesting because right there is the... Uh, What's that? The Hard Rock right there, and then uh, uh, the China Theater's a little bit. So, so this lady almost. Wow, uh, so cars getting mad. People in cars getting mad. How's it going? So the vehicle is being surrounded. Because that, that vehicle kind of like charged right behind me, actually. It was like right behind me. It's like it almost like hit the group. Almost like trying to hit the group. I don't know if it was trying to hit the group, but... Uh, Okay, so now they're marching this way. All right. All right, so people are marching, marching down Hollywood Boulevard. Let the caravan through, people. You can't get mad at every person that's a dick. You just can't. I mean, you can. But you can't, like, every single time you, it does that, it just ruins whatever was happening before. I'm sorry, it just does. It just does. Like, it's, you know? Like, also, it, I don't know. I just think people see that in there. And I've seen it, too. I've seen it's not everybody, right? It's some people. And there are other people who are the organizers. They're like, don't do that. Don't touch the car. Don't Pretty touch, much, yeah. Like, don't do that. So, like I said, like, we've always said... It's not a monolith, right? You can't control a bunch of people. You just can't. It's like, they're gonna do what they wanna do. But I'm just saying, it's not a good look. You are in the right. You may be in the right. The person may be an asshole. They might say something nasty, but like, disrupts the process. And listen to the organizer. They say don't fucking do it. Like, just don't do it. But yeah, one of the reasons that Biden signed that uh, stop Asian hate into law. It's because it has nothing to do with police. Uh, the Asian hate was coming from civilians, right? Also, of course, our government that decides to hate China every five seconds. But um, that's why they could pass that and say, oh, th look, let me give you this symbolic gesture. Let's ignore the fact that these people have been shouting for years now, right? Because Black Lives Matter was created during the Obama administration. And um when when nothing nothing has happened you have to realize this is beyond politics this is this, they're not going to do it they, they have zero interest in ever following through with any justice because this country was built on injustice what's that mean what's that mean what's that mean
They're chanting out of the store, into the streets, you've heard. Out of the restaurants, out of the bar, into the streets, out of the bar. This is the Dolby Theater that we're passing by right here. Dolby Theater, pretty famous. Usually a lot of people here, but it is a uh, Tuesday. And uh, it is, you know, not, not too many people out here as usual. Usually these streets are filled with people, right? Try looking at the stars, tourists. Yeah, I mean, it's going to get worse, guys. During the summer, there's going to be a lot of people coming here for tourism, right? And now that everything's opening back up, there's going to be lots of events. Usually they'll have, like, movie premieres and, you know, filming, etc. So I'm kind of interested in seeing what's going to happen with that because if, there, if the protests continue, whether it's for Palestine, Black Lives Matter, Medicare for All, whatever it is, because people are suffering right now, right? The working class is expanding because the people are no longer able to live. Even if they're working, a lot of people are refuse to work unless it's a living wage. We're seeing that across the fast food industry. Um, if we start seeing protesters come simultaneously as there are people on tours them, it's gonna be something new because that didn't happen last time. It didn't happen because it was COVID. <laughs> And so, since it was COVID, everything was closed. So you didn't get the normal influx of tourists. But once, you know, once summer hits here, it gets really busy. And I'm interested to see how that meshes with all the movement and the protests happening. I would like to continue seeing people out on the streets for Palestine as well. Like I said, it's one and the same. U.S. imperialism at work here. So we got Madame Tassad's over here. Um, it looks like it's not open. <laughs> no, it's not, but it, they'll, they'll be opening soon. So that's interesting. We also got opening soon. We also got La La Land over here. Over here is uh, close to that one uh, comedy club. What is it? Which one? There's, uh, there's one like right here. What's, what's it called? Oh, it, it's Laugh Factory? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, Laugh Factory. Laugh Factory is like right up here. I think I've seen Jimmy there and Ron and Graham. I'm just kind of just telling you guys where we are right now. Hollywood Boulevard, you know, the stars are all on the sidewalk, the stupid stars. I forgot where the Trump one is, but I know they put it like a little border. Yeah, it always gets ruined, always gets destroyed and shit. It's so dumb too, because it's like, I get it, but it's just the sh thing on the ground. All right, so people are still marching down Hollywood Boulevard going down all the way down Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> it's pretty far. And uh, they're ch chanting, we shut shit down. They're telling the, the people on the sidewalks who are filming to join them. That's what it is. That's what it irritates me too. Is like, there's so many people that are like, ooh, let's film this, look what's going on. But they won't do it. <laughs> They'll just film it and be like, oh, cool. Like. It's like a novelty. It's like awesome watching. Uh, it's like, oh, look at these people. It's my entertainment. America's a nation that ha doesn't have the spine a lot in a lot of ways to go out on the streets. And like, it's because they haven't been directly affected. The pandemic was the reason why people got out in the streets too. Now, you know, it's kind of it's harder because people are back to work and back to trying to you know to build back better <laughs> that's what a lot of people want they just want to go back to normal and they don't realize there there is no normal because you've been living in a fucking lie your whole fucking life so most people don't want to accept that so they create mechanisms to which to continue to rely on politicians and reform thinking that reform is possible when it's not because the system will never give you anything. You have to demand it. You have to demand it. You have to force it from them. You have to look to how other countries have done it. You know, one of the things that stuck with me that uh, in my interview with Marwa Osman, 
who's a Palestinian living in uh, Beirut, Marwa Osman, I've been saying her name wrong, Osman, um, is, she was wondering why Americans didn't get out in the streets understanding how much money we give to Israel and how much better they're living than we are. They have health care. They have longer life expectancy. And we're funding that. But they're not funding you. They're not, the government isn't funding you. They're not funding anything. They're not doing anything. The police are still getting the money. Like Johnny said, at a local level, you could see some changes. But it's very little. And again, <laughs> why? she said, she asked, why are Americans getting out in the street for that? Why, why, why aren't they making that connection that their government isn't here for them? And yet, they continue to support this system where their tax dollars go to kill little kids in Palestine and then go to kill little kids here in America with the same training, the same type of mentality. people yeah it's been yeah. nearly a thousand people since fucking since a year ago since a year ago and there's still been nearly a thousand people it's like 900 something 980 990 something a thousand people here imagine how many people our military that trains our cops kills around the world in one year how about we look at those numbers too i'm just gonna beat beat the dead horse because it is essential to understand that. It's just a death call here. The fucking America's military industrial complex. Fucking Pentagon. This is why we have to fund the Pentagon. Get your face mask. Defund the Pentagon. <laughs> on the combo couch dot store. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of comments on my vegan one. And I got, I got yeah. some comments on my defund the Pentagon one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, people are digging it, you know? There's a lot of vegans here, too. Or a lot of vegetarians and plant-based. Yeah. Abolish the CIA is another one. CIA goes around doing whatever the fuck they want. Through their fronts, like the USAID, NGOs. That's... Fuck 12 is what they're, they're... So they're chanting, fuck 12, fuck 12, fuck 12. That's what they're chanting. They're chanting... Fuck 12, fuck 12, fuck 12. That's what they're chanting. So I'm just letting y'all know what they're chanting. It's a great chant. I like it. Hey, we miss Glory Jones. Hey, Glory Jones. What the fuck? Yeah, where's Glory at? <laughs> where's Scoop Gang at? <laughs> Yo, Scoop Gang. All right, so we are continuing to march down. Now we're marching down. I don't even know what road this is. Yeah, I don't know. And, uh, but pretty much past the main part of Hollywood Boulevard. It's a pretty long march. This is like uh, maybe like a mile and a half or to get back to Vine Street, you know. But uh, here we are, Convo Couch bringing you this. But yeah, I know I didn't work out today, so this is a good little work. This is a good little, uh, good little walk. And uh, tomorrow we hit the gym strong, <laughs> ready. And uh, so we're here, La Brea Avenue, La Brea, LA, LA. This gentleman has the uh, yellow BLM flag. Like, oh, by the way, things like this don't really happen in that many places that quickly. I mean, yeah. they've been happening last year because of everything, you know, the protests erupted. But I'm just saying, in general, LA is a place where you're always going to find somebody protesting something. Like a week, every week. On the week, every week, and throughout the weekend, usually. Yeah, there was another one in, uh, today, actually, protesting this mayor. Was it a mayor? It was somebody in, uh, in a city councilwoman, I think she was in. Uh, and she had, she had posted on one of her social medias that she stood with Israel. So there was a bunch of people going out there to protest. 
you know, protest her on their community. Um, but again, you know, it's unfortunate, like, that the two things aren't, they should combine more. I saw it, you know, a couple weeks ago when it was for Palestine. I saw that a little bit, but I'd like to see more of it because the same fucking people are behind. The United States is actually calling the shots uh, when it comes to the Middle East or West Asia. The United States is complicit. In fact, more than complicit, the United States is the creator of Israel. Biden said, if we didn't have an Israel, we'd have to create one. Why? Not because he really cares about Israeli people having a nation, but because it is our giant military uh, base, right? In the Middle East, the easiest way to control the region is to create another us. And that's what's exactly what's happened, guys. Oh man. I'm pretty sure I've done like some sort of the theatrical thing in one of these little plazas <laughs> a long time ago. Fam. Fam, it's been a year. It's been a year since fucking George Floyd, I remember. Uh, so let's see. So, okay, March, the fucking the lockdown happened, right? Which was crazy. Let's remember that. I mean, that shit was crazy. We got a full moon out. Uh, and, uh, and then here in May, the first, the first George Floyd protest started happening. I remember they hit somebody. Uh, the cops hit somebody on the highway. And we were right there when that happened. And I've seen a lot of the same people out here were the same people that were there a year ago. So here we are a year later. And what has changed? And what has changed? And what has changed? Do you know why? You know why? Because because they are not going to do this. This isn't just about the police. This is about the empire we live in. It's about understanding that, you know, a lot of the times things get co-opted. For instance, they get politicized. While many people didn't care who became president, a lot of people started coming in pushing, you know, we must elect Biden because Trump is a fascist. What has Biden done? <laughs> He's literally revved up the amount of money for the police. He has gone back on every single thing he promised. He has done absolutely nothing, right, for black people, Latino people. There are more kids in cages. Well, there are more kids being deported. Um, there are still kids in cages. He went back on a student loan forgiveness. He went back on a public option. He went back on every single thing. And yet you have people like the squad still praising him, saying he's listening. What's he listening to? Seriously, what's he listening to? He's not listening to shit. But the thing is, the thing is, nobody should have expected him to do anything because for 47 years of his career, he wrote the crime bill. He wrote the Patriot Act. He was one of the people that was for higher punishments for minorities. He's always been like that. Joe Biden, the pro-segregationist Joe Biden, wasn't going to change. People clung on to this idea that he would because somehow, you know, he had to be better than Donald Trump. Because Trump, yeah. because Trump was, you know, just so blatant about his where he stood, right? He, he literally flat out said, oh, we're gonna take their oil. Oh, we're gonna, you know, this. Oh, send these people back. Like, he was blatant. The thing with Biden is he's not blatant. <laughs> he hides it under a mask of civility <laughs> that is just really masking what he's really doing, what our country's doing, how our country is standing. He says Israel has the right to defend themselves as Palestinian kids are getting murdered. The same way they condemn protesters too. Let's not forget that. He went on a, on a little meeting, Zoom meeting he had with black leaders and he straight up told them that they need to like back off. <laughs> they need to be quiet and that he's doing a lot for them when he wasn't doing shit. So that's why things haven't changed.
fam. They changed the name of some statues. They got the corporations to uh, to have some different, you know, pro the corporations to put BLM and that was enough. Exactly. Kamala that's a lot. That's a lot, fam. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot. Kamala Harris is VP, so I guess that's fine, right? That that fixes everything. Kamala Harris incarcerated more black and brown people. So much so that she didn't win a single delegate. <laughs> And that's like the Democratic Party which you're in. Why do you think that is? She couldn't even win her own people from her own city in Oakland. No. As long as people still continue playing team sports, shout out to Steve Poikinen. The Steve Poikinism. I don't play team sports. As long as people continue playing team sports um, and not realize we live in a giant oligarchy where they pit you against one another, the working class. Hey, go hate the, as Reverend Andy Chambers said, Black Panther, don't hate the crackers, she said. Hate the person in charge. Don't even hate, go after. Go after the people, right? Go after the, the people at the top. Malcolm X, Fred Hampton always echoed those words. They knew. They knew that this, this is how they continue keeping us divided. Who has more power? A ignorant, racist bigot? Or the state agencies that killed the great civil rights activists of before? Who has more power? Really, think about that. Sure, one, one is hateful and vile and there, the other, has all the power. Amos has gone to somewhere, uh, a home, I saw a homeless man on the, on the, homeless black man on the street there. We passed by that fire truck and uh, he did not look good. He was not looking good. Uh, sucks, it sucks, that's the situation. It's homeless people, homeless tents around. Uh, a lot of them being uh, minorities, people of color. That's that's my question. Um, why is there not a march, a poor people's march, like a real one, right? Because Reverend Andy told us poor people's campaign is no longer led by poor people. So maybe that's why we don't see marches, right? You would think there'd be marches here for, hey, people are homeless. Let's get out in the streets. <laughs> people are homeless. Police are, are, are targeting these homeless people, putting them in jail, or putting them in uh, just institutions. They end up in places that don't treat them like humans, right? Meanwhile, who are those veterans? Yes, a lot of people of color, particularly black Americans. Also veterans. People addicted to opi opi opioids. People addicted to any sort of drugs that can quell the thoughts that they are enduring. PTSD from having been involved in these disastrous wars where you kill civilians, you kill children, you bomb families to nothing. We're a death cult from the beginning to our entire relevance to the rest of the world. We are a fucking giant death cult. And until we accept that, like an addict, right? Until we accept government. that, we're not going to. Yeah, our government. But we are complicit if we don't do anything of it. And it's by design. They make people too tired, too overworked, too ignorant, too complacent. Give me entertainment. Give them breads and circuses. Which they don't, by the way, because... It's by design. We should have done it every night. There should have been, there needs to be, not protests, occupation, strikes, demands, all these issues, they're one and the same. They stem from the same death cult that is the US government and it's imperialism. Down. We're stopping on this intersection here. 
There's Sunset Boulevard and Highland. People are honking and being angry. And people are honking. I think some of the uh, protection people, cars are honking. Oh, you got Chick-fil-A out here, out here, Chick-fil-A. This is the one Chick-fil-A like in LA County out uh, here. And uh, well, in Hollywood, right? It's like the only Chick-fil-A in Hollywood. <laughs> but uh, fam, someone earlier in the chat said, what are these people gonna do when the prices go up 70%? Steve has been talking about this, uh, this, uh, this like uh, you know supply chain shit that they're like limiting so the prices go up and shit. I don't know what. When the what is that seventy percent? All the food prices, price. It's kind of scary. Exactly. I think, unfortunately, like most human beings, people don't act until something happens to them. Right? It's called being reactive instead of proactive. Proactively, we should be organizing for. The general strike, telling people don't work, building mutual aid, and saying you're the list of demands the American people want. Postpartisan. Don't make it political. Talk about what do you need as a worker? What do you need as a as an American right now? What do we want from our government? You make those demands. If you don't fucking do that, it's not gonna happen. You can get out on the streets. With 100 people, 200 people, 300 people, 1,000 people once every few months, something happens. But until you know exactly what these demands are, and you don't stop, you're not going to get anything. And that's a peaceful way of doing it. That's a peaceful way of doing it. Again, it's in our Constitution. The right to protest, the right to bear arms, the right to free speech. Right to freedom of the press. Tell me which one of those hasn't been attacked this whole time. Every single one of them. Every single one of them is under attack. Your Miranda rights. Every single thing. So, really, in order for anything to happen, it's going to have to directly affect the pockets of people. It's going to have to directly hit them. And that's when they'll act. That's how the, 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 the Palestinians, they did a general strike. Because, you know, they're, they're the primary, like, low-labor workers over there, I'm sure, in Israel, right? Uh, so, Israel, or actually Palestine, is at 70% unemployment. 70%! I might be higher now. That means the vast majority of people are unemployed. The average median age in Palestine, as of two years ago, I was 17 years old, a little over 17 years old. Which means that every single person that they killed with these Israeli missiles in Palestine are about 17 years old. They're children. And there's women and children. And that's it. And what they did was they were protesting so hard in Palestine. What they did in order to do that, you know what they did? They said, hey, we're gonna put our political differences aside. And we're gonna combine our efforts to oppose Israel. That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. They, there were opposing parties there who have been in opposition for years now, right? And they put their differences aside and came together. One of the things Marvel also discussed in our interview that was that she wishes Americans would do that that Americans will put their political differences aside and start targeting their military, the government. That's where all the money's going. That's where all the money's going. how they pull out money for police out of their ass all the fucking time? You don't have to worry about how that's getting paid for. But that's, that's the thing. That's what Palestinians were able to do. And they protested so much that they were interrupting the businesses in, in Jerusalem, in, 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 in Israel, in Tel Aviv. They were, it started interrupting. They started interfering with the economy of Israel. And guess what? These corporations, these governments, once you hit their pockets, they don't like it. They don't like it at all. Netanyahu then agreed to a ceasefire 
because as much as he wants to exterminate Palestinians, he still, you know, decided, hey, I'm going to agree with a ceasefire, knowing that they're not going to be held accountable for what they're doing in Al-Aqsa to, at, at, to the people praying at the mosques. They're not going to be held accountable for that. They're beating people up. They're putting their knees on Palestinian medics. The same way George Floyd had his neck and his breathing crushed by Derek Chauvin's knee. It's the same tactics. Why? Why are they going after? Oh, because they, they want them out of there. They want one Israeli state. They don't want, they want to be the only state. And so Palestinians are proud people who are not just going to give up. And they're not giving up. And, you know, there are groups that have tried to stop these imports, these sales, these ships that have sailed here with Israeli imports. And that's going to continue too. I like the way the Palestinians have been organizing against Israel. But by the way, this isn't on Israel alone. It's on our government as well. So we are marching. Uh, I'd say there's about like what, like 200, maybe a little bit less than 200 people. Uh, maybe like 150. Might have been a little bit more before, but here we are. They're marching. It's not a lot of people on the streets. Uh, the message is important, of course, though. Somebody's got to march. Uh, you know, the year since George Floyd's murder, you know, and uh, that show is disgusting. And that, those murders have been going on, continuing, they've been continuing to go on. And uh, we just want to see change. We want to see change happen. And uh, a lot of people disagree on strategy. <sighs> but we don't have time. I don't know. There's, uh, there's not a lot of time to change things. So here we are, Convo Couch, the Convo Couch, bringing you live on the ground footage here. We are on the ground, TCC. You can go to theconvocouch.com to see our, our website, catch up with us, social media, stuff like that. Check out my channel, True Rebel Network, TRN, True, 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 True Rebel Network. And uh, I'm on YouTube. Uh, this could be our backup channel. Well, it's my channel. It's a sister channel to the Convo Couch. And, uh, of course, check out MCSC Network. Uh, Nico House. We are with MCSC Network. Slow News Day. Check out Slow News Day on YouTube. Rockfin. And you can definitely check us out on Rockfin. Uh, shout out to all our people on the Rockfin. Making that extra effort to go and support us there. It's a nicer, uh, nicer video feed. You can actually uh, lock your phone and listen in on what we're saying uh, with the Rockfin app or website or anything. You can just uh, play it in the background, which is the, the feature they took away from YouTube. They took away a feature <laughs> that you could do before on YouTube because YouTube is a fucking corporation. And uh, we might not be on there very soon, so get on Rockfin. And uh, here we are, still marching. I think we're a couple blocks away from where we began on Vine Street. Oh, we're about to pass the CNN building where we held our protest. Uh, where the Convo Couch held the fuck censorship protest. And uh, we had a good amount of people there. About 60 to 80 people there. And uh, it looks like they're going to stop here for a second. They're chanting ACAB. All cops are bastards. All cops are bastards. And the chanting, no cops, no prisons, total abolition. So here we are, here we are. I'm gonna get away from the get away from the music here. A second.
let's uh, let's listen in to what they're saying. Hold that for a second.
of the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. When Palestinians are under attack, what do we do? Stand up like that. What do we do? Stand up like that. What do we do? Stand up like that. FTP! Fuck the police! Say 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 FTP! Fuck the police! Come on!
I am a revolutionary! I am a revolutionary! Tomorrow, City Hall Sessions is going to Echo Park at 1 o'clock because Echo Park is supposed to be opening back up. We're going to start at Mitch O'Farrell's office because he's going to be out of office like Jackie Lacey is out of office. So tomorrow, 1 o'clock, Mitch O'Farrell's office. His address is 1722 South Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. Tomorrow, 1 o'clock, Mitch O'Farrell's office, Echo Park. We're going to pass out PPE and water to our unhoused and whoever is around, we're going to pass it out. We thank you all if you can come out tomorrow. But please remember why we are here. Remember why we are here. Remember why we are here. Be mindful that what happened with that individual that ran through the crowd, the news may try to twist it. Yeah, he tried to hit me with his car. They may try to twist it. They may put their spin on it. But we were doing a peaceful march before we got attacked. And afterwards, he got up and gave his salute because he know the cameras was on him. As we always say, as we always remind everyone, I, you are not here for ourselves. We are here for the future generations because we don't want the future generations to experience the same thing that we have experienced. When we out like this, be mindful the security is those that's the bear between us and violence. We don't set up security just to set up security because we keep us safe. Again, I know everyone want to talk. I know everyone want to say something. But my responsibility, Andy's responsibility, and other organizers here's responsibility is to make sure each and every one of us get home safe. When we pass by over there, our security scene over 20 cars, probably 100 law enforcement, that's what they do. That's what they do. So our duty and our responsibility is to keep you safe. We love you. And do you want to say anything? Yeah, right here. We, we want to make sure we close it out. I, I know, I believe you. We gonna close it out. We gonna close it out, all right? I have to say that this is gonna be an opportunity to Let him speak first and then I'll Right now, y'all gotta understand. I don't do this shit the way that y'all do it out here. No, no disrespect to LA, but I'm from New York City. And we turn shit up. We burn shit down. Metaphorically and literally. These fucking police don't need us to stay complicit with them. We don't need to fucking comply by all any of their rules. Y'all limiting yourself. Y'all have so much, so much more power than you can ever believe or know right now. They are scaring y'all into submission. I want to say something real quick. We had media today interviewing white individuals. On, how do you feel because of George Floyd dying? Oh, boo the fuck who? I don't give a fuck how the white people feel because the black people are dying. I want to see black women speaking in these cameras. I want to see black men, black trans people speaking into these videos, these mics, these, these cameras. The next time you see a white person being interviewed on how you feel because of this black person being killed, 
I mean literally your fucking responsibility as a people and stand against that shit. You video bomb them just like y'all like to photo bomb, video bomb them and just destroy that. Cause we create the narrative. We create the narrative. We are so many people out here still confused. Still blind to white supremacy. White supremacy is within every single thing that we do. The way that we walk, the way that we throw our shoes, the way that we learn, the way that we speak. The fucking history they taught us is false. How do you feel? You just went through our entire fucking school education and they only taught you on how to be a slave to the fucking system. And yet we still go home to our nine to five and we not saying shit, we staying silent. What does that do? White silence kills. To all my white allies and comrades, go home and speak to your families, speak to your friends. Speak to the people that truly matter to you. And stop following these fucking trends. Let security take care of that. Let security take care of that. We as a people need to be focused. Because we got the deal earlier. Because a man out of his mouth speaking hate. Showing hate. Doing what the fuck he did to trigger us. Fuck that. We have a big objective. A goal. We are on a mission. We have the same goal, and that's the great, the gain, liberation, reparation, freedom. For those that don't know me, my name is Tito, and I'm the founder of the Underground Shadows. We are guiding and leading our people to freedom through a metaphorical underground railroad like Harriet Tubman once did. While creating and empowering self-sustaining leaders like you all and myself while staying in the shadows. Because it is not about the clout, nor is it about the fame. It is about empowering each other to go out after the streets to do the fucking thing. The Black Panther Party, Young Lords, the Stokos, MLK, Malcolm X, and many before us have already laid out the blueprint like I said earlier. All we need to do now is simply follow through. If you're out there gaining this clout, then use that clout for good. Yeah. If I see you coming out here and marching, taking your selfie, and then go back to your nine to five and don't do shit about yourself and or about this movement, then stay home, don't ever come back. That's not the clout we need. So LA, wake the fuck up! All the influencers, wake the fuck up! I'm sick and tired of walking these streets from our day itself. Most of the nights in New York City, educating these white people, educating the rich people. Remember, the color of our skin is a distraction to separate us. The religion that they've instilled within our hearts through fan intimidation is a distraction. It. Speak on it. Speak on it. The true education is within the people, y'all. It's within the communities that we are sworn to serve and protect as a people. The police wanted to take our speech and use it for them to make the people believe that they are safety. I say fuck the police. Fuck the police. Fuck the police. Fuck the police. From the west to the east. Fuck the police. Fuck the police. From the west to the east. Fuck the police. Fuck the police. Once again, protect one another. Educate each other. And don't despise each other. For what? I'm gonna let this queen right here speak. I'm not gonna let her speak, excuse me, let me hold myself accountable. I apologize. She speaks when the fuck she wants to speak, because she is the true queen right here. 
Please listen up. Hey, can y'all hear me? If you can hear me, make some noise. Yeah. If you can hear me, make some noise. Yeah. Okay. Yo, you do not have to follow me. But if you want to help me, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to take your phone right now and go to T-Y-N-A-C-I-T-Y that DJ on Instagram. The reason is because right as we began marching, I caught a motherfucking journalist from KNBC trying to fuck up our movement, trying to fuck up our narrative. If you need that again, that's T-Y-N-A-C-I-T-Y that DJ. You do not have to follow me. But I do ask for your help. I posted a video where her car her ass fucking sipping. She was right on there across the fucking street. Fuck you, fuck, fuck, fuck you. 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 Fuck you.
And when we give this moment of silence, we want everyone to raise up their right fist. Everyone raise up your right fist in a moment of silence, please. And then we're going to close out with songs. Thank you. Check, check, check. One, two, one, two, one, two. All right, so this is about the ending of the protest. I'm going to see if I can interview these, uh, these, these uh, two organizers that we heard speak here, hear a little bit more from them, uh, give them the opportunity to say their piece. And uh, I'm really interested, you know, because it's sounding pretty, pretty awesome, sounding like, you know, talking about the mainstream media and talking about, you know, L.A. needs to learn from New York and, you know, Empower, trying to empower the people, which is something that we don't hear a lot of out here. Uh, you know, and the, just a the speech about the, the mainstream media too, uh, how they how they change the narrative. It's so yeah. true. It's a recognition happening, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great that they're starting to notice that the mainstream media should actually be part of their wrath because the mainstream but it's media. people not from LA. So I, mean, I but that's because people in LA are caught up in a lot of LA things. Unfortunately, I mean that is the thing. Like, you know, people like um, I see that. I saw that actually. I saw that journalist interview. The white like you have to pay attention to these things, right? You can't just come to a protest and as a journalist and go ask like the the white person about how they feel. Like that's that's dumb on your part um you know and like corporate media always tries to twist the narrative we said it ourselves as soon as that happened we said they're gonna twist that they're gonna take that and say that this whole thing was antifa and BLM being violent and blah 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 they're not gonna show the rest because they leave they get their shots they get their story then they get the fuck out because they're not here for to really document what's going on they're here to spin a narrative that they're told to spin and this is like what a lot of journalists are told like they are only told they can talk about certain things and that's why when we went to cnn 
I'd like to see a protest that focuses on, on, on against mainstream media too. I'd like to see more people join our fuck censorship protest. That's why we did what we did. Because the mainstream media has been complicit in twisting the narrative. They're corporate owned. They're propaganda, they're not journalism. And that's that's the whole thing. I'm glad people are noticing and unfor- like it took somebody from, you know, outside the city to notice, but that fucking happened. You know that that it, they notice like this is what they do and this is again this is why you know whatever you know if you're a journalist you have the right to be a journalist right you have the right to be here you have all that but how you cover things is should be not it should be like you you should be asking questions to people here or you should be like speaking from a place of truth you shouldn't be making assumptions about what a whole group of people are doing especially especially if you have like national uh like ability right like it's it's so stupid and i'm glad i'm glad that was said i thought that was very um strong also the fact of of you know of just the the whole like the system is the issue right the, the we're all here because the system is is the issue and they're part of that system and they're perpetuating that narrative you guys saw that helicopter right this is what they always do so yeah it's kind of crazy the helicopter was intentionally being over the crowd right when they were doing their speeches it's yeah, really I interesting that was really weird too we've seen them do it before it's uh it's just fucking ridiculous they're, they're trying to suppress free speech also also they're trying to su- suppress the radical free speech yeah that's because they don't care about you saying all cops are bastards they care about you saying hey you have more power than you think hey Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, and all the greats already laid this this plan before us. Now you execute it. That's what they care about. They care about when you talk against imperialism. They care about when you start saying, "Hey, free Palestine at a BLM protest." They care. That's 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 you understanding that these events are connecting, right? And that's 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 all part of it, right? And that's why it's so important to continue covering because the you know the oppressed people, the working class. They need media that actually covers what happens. That's why we do what we do. That actually doesn't spin it for our corporate masters. That doesn't spin it for the state narrative propagandist. Again, this is why Julian Assange is still in jail because he exposed our war crimes. He exposed the West's war crimes. He exposed uh, through WikiLeaks and the cables. He exposed so much corruption within our system. And they can't allow that they have to make a villain out of those who do that they will not touch any journalist from washington post who doesn't challenge the status quo right they won't do it i don't i we may not have the the helicopters we may not have the vans the satellites the fancy equipment that other news media have but we we do have is the truth we're just showing you what's going on i'm giving you my perspective on what's happening here we're you know narrating we're talking to people but that's that's not what they do they leave at every single time we have covered the protests last year cnn msnbc all of these outlets they take a picture they leave because they're scared and you know it, it's all part of it guys it's it's all part it's all connected this is why we have to fucking do the things we have to fucking do this is why this is fucking why Yeah, I'm just trying to see so if I can get some interviews with some organizers here. And, uh, yeah. I'm just trying to find some people here that we could talk to. And I know I want to talk to the girl in the pink hair. Hey, brother. Wait, what does your mask say? Fuck yes. <laughs> so, keep talking, I'm going to try and get some people. Okay. Um, yeah, so... A couple things that happened here that I really liked was that people were uh, saying free Palestine, right, uh, during this march. Um, And the mainstream media thing, I'd like to see more focus on economics, but um, I think that's, you know, it's already happened and it's coming. And, you know, the fact that there's so few people here is kind of telling as to how fickle the American psyche is. They move on to the next thing, the next thing, especially here in Los Angeles where people have like a million things happening and, you know, it's all there. It's just like, 
it, it, it takes someone from New York to notice, you know, what what are you guys doing here, the mainstream media? You know, the, the next whatever protest should be at CNN, it should be protesting MSNBC, corporate media, who are complicit in spinning narratives for the culture war, right? Fox spins it one way, CNN spins it another. They actually spin it pretty much very similarly when it comes to protests, except that on one end you have people like Tucker Carlson saying something, right? And on another end you have, you know, Jake Tapper or somebody. And it's it's still, at the end of the day, they're even, let's say, even if the liberals are like, hey, oh, well, you know, people have the right to protest, but they'll say, but no, no violence, no this, no that. Like, they'll condemn it. They'll say, oh, look, some of these protesters are just, you know, doing this and that and they're being violent and then Fox will take it to another level and they'll be like oh that person was trying to hurt the poor guy that was there by himself just because he didn't agree with them and it's it's not that simple right it's 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 not that simple they don't have nuance they don't have complexity because they feed off the culture war so I hate it when people feed into the culture war whether you're right or wrong when you feed into the culture war it diminishes the movement. It diminishes what you're trying to accomplish. What that person said is that objective, that objective um, is, is extremely important, right? So I really like what you had to say up, uh, when you were talking up there on the speech. And uh, what's your name? Tenacity. Tenacity. My name is Jonathan. Uh, thank you for taking this interview. You know, well, you were talking a lot of spe you were speaking a lot of truth up there on this uh, on the stage here. You're speaking a lot of truth about the mainstream media and how they manipulate the narrative. Uh, when they come out to these, they, they get their five minutes and then they leave, right? You know, that we've seen that happen. We've seen it a lot. We've seen it throughout the summer, last summer, when this all began. How they twisted the narrative, saying that oh, it's all these riots and riots and everything. So, uh, I just want to give you the opportunity to speak on that more uh, and. Uh, I also want to ask you, you know, it's been a year since the murder of George Floyd, and do you feel like there's been a lot of change? We, we, we're not, we haven't been seeing change, a lot of big change, you know? We've seen it in pinpo pinpoint pockets across the country, right? But I, I want to see like a big str a brush, a brush of change across America, but I want to hear your thoughts on that. As far as the change, I want to ask you your, answer your second answer for, uh, question first. As far as the change, there has been a lot of efforts. There's been big efforts to have big change. The power of the police associations across the country has been a combative force against the big changes that have been, have been made because they've been made uh, in a sense of reform and not abolition. And the difference between reform and abolition is reform is what is utilized to make actually the cops stronger. It's made to use the law enforcement stronger. It's like, oh, we've learned our lesson, so give us more money, and so we'll and we'll change. We'll do these things, but we we constantly see that every time we give the cops more money, all they do is more murder more people, primarily black and brown people. So so we have this this ebb and flow of reform going on, and the name of transformation in the name of reimagining when all their all all the you know mainstream politicians and corporations and mainstream entities are doing is just taking the language of the common folk and the grassroots organizers and flipping it to fit what they're really trying to do and that's just really to keep funding the police keep funding all these programs that are harmful to our uh, to the greater population whether you're being killed by police or not it's harmful to you because it's, eventually it's going to hit somebody that you know and what are you going to do when that happens and with when it comes to mainstream media number one their their first issue is that they don't reach out to the families of those affected by state sanctioned violence enough they don't talk to those folks like when when it comes to them being on the ground especially like last year for Jackie Lacey I know I got interviewed but I know that there are families that had never gotten interviewed and never got a chance to share their story so I stopped I stopped you know using my voice because the, the families' voices are the ones that should be heard first and foremost because they're the ones that are being harassed by the sheriffs and they're being harassed by the police 
every time you know they want to speak out against against what happened to their family member and that's not okay that's not okay for you to dismiss those who have been affected directly by staying shanks, staying shanks and violence so so that's you know a, a big issue and an issue is that uh, of, of what I had today is overgeneralization of what people's intentions are. Um, I'm a big believer of setting your intention out every time you go, you know, before every time you go out because safety is paramount for those who are out in the streets. It's, it's paramount because you never know what may happen out of action. You never know when Excuse me. You never know when law enforcement might try to kettle you or try to use a tactic exactly. to entrap you. And that's happened to me before. And I don't want that to happen to anybody else on the earth. I don't care if you're my worst enemy and I don't consider anybody to be one to have enemies, but I just don't want that to happen to anybody. And it was just for marching, right? Like you're just literally just marching, exercising your first amended right, first amendment right. And they were still doing that. Uh, uh, can you speak more on uh, he, the gentleman up here was talking about Malcolm X and Fred Hampton and all that. I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering if you're familiar with them as well. Yes, I am familiar and I'm familiar with how prominent their focus was on black liberation. And their messages are all the more relevant today, I would say, because we live in an age of technology where power of the people can be more utilized, but the power of corporations, you know, we're on Facebook talking about white supremacy in a way that's calling it out. You get blocked and you can put it on Facebook jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we see corporations kind of just taking like BLM and then just putting it on there, you know. A lot of it has to do with capitalism, which is what I really liked about Fred Hampton getting there. Uh, Malcolm X was starting to get there before they they took him out. The FBI took him out, right? So then, uh, so any thoughts on that? Well, yeah, um, you know, capitalism is what white supremacy's purpose is in staying around. They use the color white to uphold the color green, and because of that, we have to dismantle those who think that. The, that have the piece of the pie mentality. Like, oh, for example, black people are getting all the exposure about their strife, so that leaves no room for Latinos, or that leaves no room for Asians to let about their struggle, or we're struggling as non-black POC, but oh, it's at the hands of black people who are have, may have ignorance or may have prejudice. And what I'm saying is that, all oh, that is a product of white supremacy. Black people get a blow, get the blowback on a lot of shit that happens to other people who are oppressed. Yes. And because of that, it makes things harder to discern, like what, what, should, whose fight is really my fight too. Black people's liberation is the liberation of everybody, undoubtedly, because it's not a matter of being the most oppressed. Simply as that, it's a matter as that because we are the most oppressed, everyone else who's on this supposed hierarchy within white supremacy is connected to that chain. It's like it's like a food system, so to speak. So that's why when we say no people are free until black people are free, that means that when you go to the very bottom of the food chain and you start to make egalitarian efforts to rise up the most oppressed people, that's bringing everyone else that's on that food chain supposedly up to that same status of humans. We're all fucking humans, that's the whole, whole thing about it. And it doesn't, it's not that our, our biology makes it, makes us different, it's purely our societal frame yes. of mind yes. that makes us think that we're different or that someone's better than and, and as, as soon as we dismantle that train of thought and the, the systems that are based on that train of thought then you know we will start to see train uh, you know we'll start to see the change and I would recommend everyone read stamped from the beginning um, 
and when you read that by Dr. Um, <laughs> Gandhi Ibrams, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mispronouncing his name, yeah. um, but if you read Stamp from the beginning, it, it talks about the history of white supremacy, how it goes centuries back, and how it got other racial groups to be a part of that system, and why it needs to be dismantled today, yesterday. Yeah. We've heard uh, we've heard some chants for free uh, for free Palestine. You know, uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, the Israeli IDF uh, actually trained the police here. Yes. It's it's something I, I feel like I, I wish I'd hear more of. You know, any thoughts on that? You know, it's like oh well, I, that goes back to you know, your fight is my fight. Free Palestine is definitely connected to the Black Liberation Movement because of the connection that white supremacy has. It goes back to that stand from the beginning because when European-based racism came to the Americas and America's trying to figure out how do we make this our own and you know at first like you know American white supremacists didn't want to teach slaves Christianity because the thought that is if you're a Christian then you become free so then they found a way to make slaves Christians while keeping them enslaved and that is the, that's like supposedly the maturation of white supremacy from Europe to America. So that connection is really deep. And so white supremacy is international just like the struggle is international. Yeah, and you know, I feel like a lot of the ways they do it is like through imperialism, right? The military is the, the, the largest military in the world. You know, we, we spend the most money in the military. We've seen bloated... Uh, bloated the national defense budgets be you know even higher even through Trump I didn't see any opposition from the Democrats I didn't see opposition from the Republicans they came together and they got they passed that I, I, I would have liked to see I don't know if you're into politics at all or you, you follow like specific people that are in Congress or anything like that well myself I, I am an independent uh, I do follow politics I have waves where I have to cut myself off because uh, I'm either really busy in the streets or I am having to protect my mental health. Yeah. So um, I understand that neoliberals right now are in federal uh, power and, and because of that we're seeing a lot of the same things that we were seeing during Trump being in office where we were promised change exactly. and uh, that is going to be very problematic for the neoliberals in uh, a year and a half or so <clears throat> but uh, it's also going to be problematic for the, the people because we're not getting the things that we demanded like reparations we're not getting things like closing the detention centers and freeing the kids from those camps freeing the adults from those camps I'm okay personally I'm for open borders but we need a system in place to honor the humanity of those who have been serving our country, whether they're documented or not. Yeah, it's sad. You know, it's it seems like Biden has, has he's fallen on all these uh, on all his promises, and you know he's had a record forty something years beforehand. You know, segregation. He wore the night he uh, wrote the 1994 crime bill. He's he said he didn't want his uh, for, uh, kids growing up in a racial jungle. So it's like I don't know. Uh, I wish more people would see that the the, the duopoly, the two-party system. You know, uh, playing team sports. It's like it's like people are trying to play team sports. Like my team's better than yours, so I'm gonna vote blue, and my team's better than yours, so I'm gonna vote red. But it's like I I respect that you're independent. You know, I think more people should be independent uh, because uh, the the two-party system's not the way. It's not the way. Tis not the way. No. So, uh, thank you so much. Do you have anything else you want to speak about? Uh, yeah. w more actions that you do on the ground? Uh, uh, yeah, so, I, so I'm so i Tenacity That DJ. That's T-Y-N-A-C-I-T-Y That DJ. And I am one, an artist for the movement. My goal is to help as many gr uh, groups that are on the ground have their own sound systems. Nice so that they're able to sustain safety uh, with whatever actions that they're doing and to provide more joy like we're hearing music. I'm all about music within the movement because this is a struggle. Like it's hard to be out here. The least you can do is provide some joy because that's part of showing our humanity is showing joy. So I have the Turn Up The Streets campaign which is relaunching for 2021. 
and we're trying to raise as much money as possible to give as many groups across the nation as possible their own sound systems so that they can keep keep their people who are with them safe. Um, That's great. Yes, thank you. Um, and I also want to uh, just call out Beverly White. Beverly White of KNBC or NBC4 in Los Angeles. She was very condescending towards constituents that were demanding dialogues with her, primarily myself. But I don't want that to happen to anyone else. Uh, I do not believe that KNBC, KTLA, or any other corporate media network is out here reporting on the actions that are on the ground for the right reasons. I have known from experience that they're out here trying to create a narrative that everybody that's out here is being destructive or that people out here don't have a greater purpose and that's absolutely not okay with myself and it's not okay with others and especially not okay with the independent journalists that are out here risking their lives to report what's actually going on and there are amongst them people and understand the importance of accurate journalistic integrity. Accurate journalistic integrity means that not only are you being honest with your reporting, that you're not overgeneralizing a situation that could be harmful to other people. I also want to call out all the rappers, DJs, and producers that had a photo op and supposed to dialogue with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department over the weekend. Um, there, there, there were a number of rappers, DJs, producers uh, that that had a conversation with Los Angeles Sheriff's Department of how to keep black men alive. And although that is a great dialogue to have, the manner in which it was uh, executed was horrible and horrific, and that should not have happened. If they really wanted to be with the people, they should have connected with various groups that are organizing on the ground every day to, sh uh, to understand what they've been doing to help with the situation. Instead, they went straight into the beast mouth. And not only did they give LASD a photo op uh, for public relations, uh, you know, clout that they don't deserve, they have created the notion that they were doing something positive when they actually were putting artists that are protesters at risk. So I, I, I want to say that Beverly White and all those folks that pose with LASD get your shit together. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tenacity. It was great talking to you. Yeah, I wish it was more revolution music. I, I want to hear more revolution music. The, the music is so important. It's, it's the creation. I want to tell you this. All aspects of black expression is revolution because just breathing while black is, is like you know, could kill you. Like, it could kill you, really. So, you know, when I first came out here, you know, I had my playlist, because before pandemic, I was DJing at all the clubs and parties and had club and party music. So, you know, that's what I started playing, and it wasn't that I wasn't into revolutionary music, right. it's just that I was catering to the crowd. But what I, why I say all of that is that I have a little bit of everything for somebody, and something like, you know, like Bus said, like, if you want to go to New Black City, which is a protest art exhibition that's being held by Black Lives Matter Los Angeles, as well as the Museum of Social Justice, it's something that I've put a lot of time and energy into creating. So it's at 115 Paseo de la Plaza. It's in El Pueblo Plaza, where Los Angeles was founded by black and brown people. And if you want to hear a variety of black expression, you're going to hear Fight the Power. You're going to hear Bust It. You're going to hear everything because black expression should be honored. We shouldn't be killed over anything. There are people that have been killed just because they're playing loud music in Florida. Like, there have been black people killed for every single reason that you can imagine. And because of that, all of that is part of the revolution to me, in my opinion. Thank you so much, Tenacity. Thank you for taking the time. Yes, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm going to have to find you. <laughs> Thank you so much.
So there we go. I got a couple things to say. She was wonderful, wasn't she? Um, I love that she spoke out against the media. I, I love it. I love it. Um, so we have a right winger stealing our content right now, and he labeled it as Antifa and rioters, uh, <laughs> like we called it. So this this right winger pasta just texted me. I don't know who it is, but uh, he's stealing our content and he's using it to frame his narrative to say that Antifa and rioters destroy were attacking people. I it took two seconds, guys. I knew they were gonna do that. That's why you don't you don't fall for it, right? I get it. I get it. Next time they need to listen to the organizers because they knew what they were doing and they were trying to you know keep people safe and. Uh, it, that's what they want. They 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 send some idiot for that moment for yes. somebody to respond, and now they're stealing our footage because we're here on the ground and the putting their claim. narrative. Oh yeah, expect a fucking copyright claim. You don't get to steal our footage and on top of that make the narrative. I don't care if it, somebody stole our footage and it was like an independent journalist that was saying, hey, uh, this is part of what happened. But when you're trying to frame a lie. And this is why I have issues with people like, you know, Andy No and Eon Miles Chung and all these people that take videos and, 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 and frame them. Dude, like, I don't feed into that culture war bullshit, right? I don't, I don't have to go after them every five seconds and, and tell, talk about how they're awful and how, my, how they're Nazis. I don't give a shit about that. But I will fucking say, when you're, when you're taking our shit to frame people a certain way, that it, and it's not true, we're gonna have a problem with it and expect a fucking copyright claim, you piece of shit. So anyways, because uh, here people are celebrating right now, or you know, they're dancing, expressing black black culture as, as, our, as our guest Tenacity was saying. Uh, they, they, there's this very viral TikTok song, it goes, bow, 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 bow. Yeah, anyways, people dance to it, it's a pretty, it's pretty great song. Uh, so here we are. There are candles all around the fountain. We've seen the LAPD. Actually, uh, LAPD has been absent here today, which is interesting. Uh, there's been a lot of news crews here. Uh, I guess it's only important because it's only the one-year anniversary. It's, that's when they come out, fam. Yeah, they, like, like she said, they just they came for their little photo op and their little narrative, and then they left. And by the way, I love how she called out to the, the influencers. You will never see me take a fucking selfie at a BLM march and be like, oh my God, I'm here. I've seen way too many people who are activists in or this activists, community yeah. do it all the time. It's not about you. Yeah, they, they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll put the fist up in the air yeah, and then they'll be like, yeah. Like, yeah. like, that's like, yeah. not about you. Don't fucking do that. It's so stupid. This is about what's happening and, you know, and, and uh, you know, it just, it, as a journalist, it's about, you know, showing what's actually happening and talking to the people here. And, uh, and Johnny, I, you know, he needs to get in front of the camera more. So great job, great questions, by the way, Johnny. Thank you, I know uh, it's... Uh... And, you know, you have to think, uh, uh, you know, off the cuff, really, like, uh, just what, as what's happening. But, yeah, it's, it's by the way, it's these, off the cuff. this is, the, what you don't do is piss people off as a journalist and do, the wrong thing and you know and look they're all gone they're all gone right they they're all gone and i'm glad i'm so glad people saw that and then she's from wisconsin the other person i forgot was to New ask York. her about that i yeah, forgot to ask I was her just about that wisconsin and that is a very divided state guys very divided state um so, yeah. but yeah so i guess we'll sign off we'll sign off guys we'll see you tomorrow we'll be doing our regular show we'll be i don't know See him. Okay. Um, guys, I'm exhausted. I will. Uh, we'll see you soon. Combo. Thank you, guys. Thank you for following. Thank you for watching. Get on Rockfin. R O K F I N. How are you doing? Great. Would you like an interview? Yes, I'm trying to get interviewed. As you know, I'm from Belize. Black Lives Matter. You're from Belize? Yes, yeah, straight out of Belize. <laughs> straight out of Belize. You know, are we live? We are live. We are live. Brother, brother, let me get my. You care? Did you get vaccinated or? Um, no. No, you good? You, are you good though? You good? Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So my name is Jonathan, and I'm speaking to who? Um, Brooksy the Rasta. Okay, great. So brother, tell me. Uh, you know, it's been a year since it's uh, since the murder of George Floyd, man. Yes. And uh, you know, there's been a lot of protests over the summer, last summer, and then you know, it was like uh, so many protests, you know, for George Floyd for 
There's been a uh, not almost a thousand murders since right. since Ahmad Aubrey, Ahmad Aubrey in Palmdale. They hanged him. Yeah, I was at, I was there in Palmdale for that, and I, I got some store footage of that. Um, it's it's crazy, man. I feel like. Uh, do you feel like, in your opinion, do you do you see that there's change going? I feel like I'm seeing change with the people, right? More and more people are aware, but yeah. systemically. Do you feel like there's been a lot being done or no? No, there is no change, and I just feel like there's a lot of cover-up between the government and the the one percenters or, like, you know, the elite, whatever you want to call them. But there's, like, a whole bunch of people that we can't see or invisible people or invisible companies that run what we have going on. We're out here, like... We're doing all this, but I feel like it's it's making a movement and everybody see us and stuff, but in the news and everything, we're not being portrayed how we're supposed to and we're not really getting like that 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 recognition. Right. The, it feels like the mainstream, uh, mainstream media has like a narrative that they're uh, placating to. Like, you know, they're, they're being paid by somebody to, to spew out this narrative that usually during the summer they'd be like, oh, there's all these riots and everything, right? Completely just right, right. erasing the whole point of the of the protest. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, that that's true, but like I said, like the message is still getting across. Choose our social media and choose our people and everything, cause it's all the way in Belize now. In my country, we have George Floyd brothers there. It's in Palestine. They are over there helping them. So it's like you already know. It's everywhere. Corona is everywhere and they're trying to do that one world order, one world government or the new world order or, or the, um, the, the, yeah, the new world order. Yeah. And they're trying to do that global population and stuff. So it's all a distraction. Because if you notice, first it was the fires, right? Then the George Floyd murder, the, the um, Ahmaud Arbery, um I forgot the dude Brooks. It was a, a dude Brooks that got murdered at, at a um yeah. So you know, right? And then after after that, then we had the protests and, and then Corona hit. Then everything is like then it, it's just dying down now. Yeah. yeah. This is like my first one coming to. Like this is my first, you know, but I heard it when everybody was out here and stuff, then it just died down. Like where everybody go? That's what I was wondering, but it's still getting across though because people all the way in Belize, South America, Central, <laughs> Middle East, Europe, everywhere were known. Yeah. Yup. Yeah. And it's yeah. not just for black people. It's a worldwide it's for movement. Everybody. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're right. The the word has gone around. There's been worldwide protests for for the, uh, you know, uh, for Black Lives Matters and the recognition of that. Uh, how long have you been here? How long have you been in? Uh, in the states. Um, I've been here for like five years. Yeah, came out of Belize in 2016 or April. Okay, great, you know? great, great. Yeah. So what what brought you what brought you to come out here? Um, to better myself, better my life, get a better education, better life. You know, cause in Belize it's a third world country and it's different out there. And if I would have stayed there, it wouldn't have been good for me and stuff. You know, cause my brother he was a gangbanger and stuff, and he just passed away. Like somebody killed him in Belize. You know. So like I, my mother brought me out of that life for a better life. Yo. That's good to hear. That's Yo. good to hear, brother. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities here. What do you think about? What are your thoughts about uh, capitalism and 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 you know versus like it's the socialism, uh, social, socialism, you know, economics that plays into uh, into everything. I'm just curious about your thoughts. Um, well, those two terms, I'm not really too familiar with that because I don't associate myself with that. Like you know, I'm a, a free roamer or. Like a gypsy would say, a Rasta free thinker, you know, I do my own thing. I make my own money. People mad at me because I don't have a regular job. But guess what? I'm not a slave to the system, so I'm not about to do that. I'm a king from Belize, from the tribe of Zebulon and the tribe of Benjamin. So if I know who I am, why should I go and work for them? Why should I go from 9 to 5 to work for them while I can work that same 9 to 5 and have my own business and work for myself at 22? So by the time I'm 30, my kids is already eating food from my plate, you know? But if everybody would just wake up and stop watching the television or the Netflix or all of that, because when you watch television, he's telling you his vision, bro. I want to tell you my vision, my story, not his story. So I'm a king, bro. I realize everything. I see everything. I feel it. So I can't be blinded by their vision. I got to see my own way, pave my own road, you know, stay on my path, my pathway that the most high job set out for me so I can't lose myself. 
And every time I lose myself, I should have my brothers, my sister, my kings, my queens, my bloodlines right there to be like, yo, you fucking up. This is what you should do. Get back on track. Come on, what you doing? You know? But most of the days, they're just trying to divide and conquer. Yes. One us, you know, and everybody. Like, it, it shouldn't be like that. It, it's really apparent here, the uh, the class divide, you know? You see the tents on the streets, yeah. and then you see people driving around in their Lamborghinis and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, so the class, they're, they're definitely trying to, to, to divide and conquer. That's just exactly what they're doing. They're trying to uh, create this narrative that, you know, we're different when really, you know, we're, we have a lot more in common than the people that are up there in the 1%, right? right? And the people who are running shit. So, uh, thank you, brother, so much. Do you have anything else that you want to talk about um, or say? No, I'm good. All right, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, brother. All right, respect. Take care. All right, fams. All right. Signing off? Yes. All right, guys. Sorry. That was a awesome. Good to hear that he knew about the Great Reset. <laughs> or something. Or something the like, along the lines of that. Um... Yeah. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching we really appreciate it we appreciate you uh, great job great coverage today everybody's saying so good job for coming out and we have a show in the morning or in the afternoon so we're gonna sign off all right the, the, the guy says dude are you serious nothing good that comes out of TikTok." <laughs> By the way, by the way, I just wanted, I saw something in the chat like about, you know, BLM, the organization had received millions from blah, 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 from, yeah. Uh, All of that is true, guys. All of that is true. The, a lot of these people are associated with national. A lot of these people are in other organizations. It's not a monolith. Again, you can't say that the organization is in charge of this because they're not. There's so much nuance to that, guys. A lot of people no longer affiliate themselves with the national chapter. So you just, um, there's a lot of things with that. So, all right, guys. Bye. Combo Thank out. Thank you for watching us. Get, get, make sure you get on Rockfin, R-O-K-F-I-N, uh, slash to Convo Couch, and uh, sign up for free. Free to sign up. Uh, if you want to help us out, it's $9.99. Or you can just tip, and we get that money. Yep. Easy tipping, because we're not allowed to have Super Chats, because YouTube demonetized us. And fuck YouTube. We tell the truth. That's why they demonetize why. us. We keep it real. Thank you so much. Vegan, but we'll eat the rich. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my only exception. Thank you, guys. Thank you for uh, watching. I love you all. Combo.